Welcome everyone. We are doing a video lecture series on vector analysis. And in the previous video, we discussed gradient of a scalar function and its physical significance. We know that gradient is always found of a scalar function. The quantity has to be scalar. And then only we can find gradient of that scalar quantity. And we have also concluded that gradient of a scalar quantity is itself a vector quantity. Whenever del operator operates on any scalar quantity, then what we receive is a vector quantity. Today, we are going to discuss divergence and curl of a vector function. So, these two also involve del operators. So, del is the main operator who is going to act in both these terms. The way gradient involves del, similarly divergence involves del operator and curl also involves del operator. So, our del operator here is in the main lead. Okay. But the thing here to remember is that this del operator, if we are talking of divergence and curl, then that would always act on a vector function. Now, we cannot say that we are finding divergence of a scalar function or divergence or you can say the curl of a scalar function or divergence of a scalar quantity and so on. So, this thing is meaningless. Always remember that whenever we talk of gradient, we always say gradient of a scalar quantity or of a scalar function. But whenever we talk of divergence or curl, then we always say divergence of a vector function or curl of a vector function. It's like divergence and curl, they are always operated or found of a vector function. So, there is no divergence of scalar function, there is no curl of scalar function because both these terms, they are associated with vector nature of a quantity. And how do we differentiate a vector quantity from a scalar quantity? Well, obviously, one thing is common between the two, which is magnitude. Both scalar and vector, they have magnitude, but vector has direction also, which scalar doesn't have. So, vector is having direction and direction is the differentiating factor between the two. And both these terms, divergence and curl, they are associated with that vector nature of the quantity. So, magnitude is definitely there, but it is the direction which is more important. Okay? In whatever direction the vector quantity is operating, then we actually care about divergence and curl. Now, this divergence and curl of a vector function in this particular video, we are going to discuss both these terms mathematically. That how do we obtain, how do we derive these terms using this del operator. But just for your understanding, till now, just understand that divergence means spread. See here, you can see in the picture that these all these arrows there is some sphere ball and you can see or you can say that it is some vector quantity okay some vector quantity is spread over this region and we can say that all these vectors they are just protruding out of it and they are just spreading out so this is divergence divergence itself also means something which is spreading out which is not contracting instead it is diverging Similarly, curl is also associated with vector nature. As you can see here, all these vectors, they are just revolving, they are just rotating in some direction. And the direction also you can guess, it is anti-clockwise direction. But there is some rotation of vectors. So, definitely direction is also there that they are rotating in anti-clockwise direction. And here, in this particular sphere, the arrows, they are spreading out. So, divergence also can be of two types. Something which is coming in or something which is going out. Here, all the vectors are going out. So, the vector quantity, it's diverging 
in the sense that all the vectors they are just moving out of it and where we talk of curl then here you can see that it's there is no divergence you cannot see that they are just moving out or just spreading no they are confined in a particular region all the vectors they are confined in a particular region but they are rotating they are curling in anti clockwise direction okay so this is curl so this is the meaning of divergence and curl but their physical significance will discuss in upcoming videos okay in this particular video we'll only discuss the mathematical nature of divergence and curl of a vector function as far as divergence is concerned we say there is spreading of vectors vectors just spread out or inward it could be that some vectors they are just coming from different direction and they are concentrating to a particular point or it can happen that from a particular point vectors they are just originating and they are just spreading out which we often take to be the actual meaning of divergence and in case of curl there is rotation of vectors we can have situation where we can find both divergence and curl of vector like we can have something which is rotating also and then spreading also these things are also there all those examples we will study in upcoming videos so let's consider a vector so let's consider a vector a which is a differentiable vector field of course whenever we talk of gradient or divergence or curl the fields should be differentiable okay because that is the main reason why we study all these terms if something is not differentiable then all, finding all these terms that completely lose their meaning now if i'm saying that it is a differentiable vector field that means we can differentiate it with respect to some variables with respect to some independent variable can you tell what those variables could be well as you can see we have defined the way we define a vector tells a lot about it and the way we define a vector tells us that with respect to what parameters we can differentiate it as you can see here we have i cap g cap and k cap which definitely correspond to three directions x y and z axis and of course we have written the components of a which is ax along i cap ay along j cap and az along k cap so that means ultimately this vector function is depending on our space coordinates which is which are x y and z axis so that means a is a differentiable vector field and we would differentiate it with respect to x y and z and since it is depending on all three so that differentiation would involve curl curly d upon curly x curly d upon curly y curly d upon curly z and if the curly d's are involved that means we can use del operator because our del operator looks like this because most of the times our studies our measurements are concerned with positions concerned with space coordinates because we live in three dimensional world so whatever happens around us we try to study it with respect to all those three dimensions we consider we care about length we care about breadth we care about height x y and z axis are always there so most of the times in our calculation we have to differentiate with respect to x y and z axis and thus to ease our job this del operator has been coined it's been defined just to ease our job because all the time we have to take partial differentiation with respect to x y and z so it's easy that we have just one operator which includes the partial differentiation of all three and we just need to use this and our work will be done okay so now let's define the divergence and curl
divergence of a can be defined as we also write it as div a but the real symbol is del dot a so now this del operator is going to have dot product with vector a and now you know how to find dot product first just write down what the two operator what the two vectors look like first is our del operator and it is having dot product with our vector a which is given by ax i cap plus a y j cap plus a z k cap as we know in dot product i cap only interacts with i cap j cap only interacts with j cap and k cap only interacts with k cap okay so now in just one step we are going to write what would our answer be so here if i cap only interacts with i cap and we know i cap dot i cap is 1 so we are left with you can see i dot i cap will give us 1 j dot j cap and k dot k cap will also give us 1 so we would be left with this curly by curly x and this a would sit here because ultimately I have told it before that this del operator is it in itself it is incomplete because okay it is showing us i cap j cap and k cap the directions but this curly by curly x has a meaning that partial differentiation of something with respect to x but that something is always missing so that's why alone del operator has no meaning but once you attach any function then its meaning comes into action so if it is a scalar quantity then also it fits here if it's a vector quantity then also the components of that quantity will fit in case of scalar quantities as we talked before phi scalar quantity is itself has just magnitude so we never say that phi x phi y phi z we simply use phi but when we have a vector quantity then we describe it in terms of components along i cap j cap and k cap here so this a y would sit here and this a z would sit here and that's why we get curly a x by curly x plus curly a y by curly y plus curly a z by curly z so this is the thing that we obtain and can you tell what kind of quantity is this is this a scalar quantity or a vector quantity well this is a scalar quantity because we don't have i cap j cap or k cap in the answer and this thing if you differentiate any quantity with respect to x of course we know that this ax would be having x terms and this a y would be having some y terms and az would be having some terms which involve z and we can easily differentiate all of them with respect to x y z and respectively and we would obtain some number or some quantities but definitely i cap j cap and k cap won't be there so this is a scalar quantity this is scalar so that means now we take divergence of a vector but the answer obtained is a scalar and this is opposite to gradient we take gradient of a scalar but the answer obtained is a vector and then when, when we take this divergence we always take it of a vector and the answer obtained is a scalar so thus we say that del dot a is a scalar function also there is a term which we should always remember that a vector function whose divergence vanishes that means a function which is not diverging at all and here vanishes means that if mathematically you solve and this del dot a it comes out to be zero in that case this a would be called this a vector function would be called solenoidal vector function so this is a term that we should remember whenever in in real life or physically we would say that the vector function is not diverging it's still but it's not diverging and mathematically we would say that if 
when we solve this thing and the answer obtained is 0, in that case, this vector A is known as solenoidal vector function. So, this is a term that we should always remember because such question often comes, usually the question comes in the form that prove that vector A is solenoidal. So, in that case, you have to show that del dot A comes out to be 0. And sometimes they say that vector A is solenoidal, find the value of some, some variable. In that case, you have to take it as such that del dot A is 0. So, you put all this term is equal to 0 and then you solve for unknown variables. Now, let's find curl of vector A. So, we often call it curl A. We often write it as rot A. Rot means rotation because curl of a vector means that vector is rotating and but the real symbol that we use is del cross A. So, now you can see that there is a cross product between del operator and this vector function A. And you know that dot product and cross product, they are always found between two vectors. Whenever you need to find dot product or cross product, you should take two vectors. So, the two quantities taken should be vectors. Otherwise, it's just not possible. Dot product without vectors is meaningless curl or you can say if you are taking cross product and if one of the quantity is not a vector then also you won't get any answer because that would be meaningless too that's the reason that we say that divergence and curl whenever we find it is always of a vector quantity okay so this is the reason why we say that the divergence and curl is always of a vector quantity because divergence involves dot product and curl involves cross product and dot product is always between two vectors and same for the cross product that is also always between two vectors okay so this is one of the reason so now let's see How can we write it? First, we need to mention what is del and A. Now, since this is cross product and we have already studied and discussed how to find cross product, that is we use determinants. So, here I am going to write I cap, J cap and K cap and since order matters in cross product, so if del coming first, then I have to mention the components of del operator first and A is coming, vector A is coming afterward. So, then in the second line, I would represent the components of vector A. So, del is coming first. So, here I am going to write curly by curly x, which is the component for x axis, then curly by curly y and curly by curly z. And for vector A, I can write ax, ay and az. And now you should remember how do we do this, how do we solve it. First we take i cap and then there is cross product between these two. So this gives us, this is the thing. And then for j cap, we always mention minus sign. Okay. And then that is the cross product between these two. This is for j cap and then for k cap again positive sign. And that is between these two. So, this is the component for k cap. So, now just let me write it properly. This becomes i cap curly a z upon curly y minus curly a y upon curly z. Okay. Here, this is minus sign. Either you can write minus j cap or if you want to write plus j cap, then we have to consider this first. So, this would be curly A x upon curly z minus curly A z upon curly x and then k cap is already with plus sign. So, this is curly A y by curly x minus curly A x by curly y. Okay. Now, can you tell me what is this quantity? Is it a scalar or a vector? 
Well, since in the answer we are having I cap, J cap and K cap, that means it is a vector quantity. So that means when we find curl of a vector, the answer obtained is also a vector. Okay. So today we have discussed mathematically both divergence and curl of a vector function. So let's just summarize all the three terms, gradient, divergence and curl. Alright, so this is a table. We have gradient, divergence and curl, the three terms. And here we are going to discuss what is the quantity used to find these three, what is the symbol and what is the result of thing. So first let's talk about gradient. So gradient is always formed, that is always found of a scalar. Gradient is always of a scalar. Divergence is always of a vector function. And curl also always of a vector function. Now what is the symbol? The symbol would be del phi. Phi, I am using the common notation that most of the time we denote a scalar function, a scalar quantity by phi. Okay. So the same I am using here and the reason why we can find gradient of a scalar is that here there is no dot product or cross product involved between the two because we know that dot product and cross product they both involve two vectors but here one is vector another one is scalar. So definitely dot product and cross product cannot be used here. So that's why no sign in between that means yes it will be a simple multiplication whatever is the expression for del phi would simply sit on all those places curly by curly x curly by curly y and curly by curly z phi would simply sit there okay and then for divergence we have del dot a and a is a vector so here both these quantities are vectors Then we talk of curl, then curl again involves del and a vectors with a cross product between the two. So again both are vectors because we need vectors for dot product and cross product. Okay fine. So now when vector interacts with scalar, of course magnitude will be there but vector is also having its i cap, j cap and k cap, the direction. And there is nothing which can cancel out those directions. So direction will be accompanied. So the answer would be a vector. Here since both the vectors are involved and we know in dot product i cap, j cap and k cap they are just removed. And what we are left with is a scalar quantity, just a magnitude. So divergence or dot product of two vectors gives us a scalar. So same thing comes here. Then in curl, we have two vectors and there is cross product between them. We know cross product of two vectors again gives us a vector. So here again the answer would be vector. So this is a short table which you should always remember because most of the time short questions come and it can they can come in form of true false or fill up and they might confuse you that a person is trying to find divergence of a scalar. So is it possible to find divergence of a scalar? It could be one marks question or anything. So if you know it, you can answer it. Okay. So that's all for today. In the upcoming videos, we'll discuss more about these three terms. We'll discuss the physical significance of divergence and curl and we would try to solve various derivations and theorems which are based on these three. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.